Is it possible that intelligence is just statistics? Yeah. But what kind of statistics? So uh, if you are asking the question, are the model of the world, the models of the world that we learn, um, do they have some notion of causality? Yes. Mm. So if the criticism comes from people who say, you know, uh, current machine learning systems don't care about causality, which, by the way, is wrong, uh, you know, I agree with them. Yeah, you should, you know, your model of the world should have your actions as one of your of, of the inputs, and that will drive you to learn causal models of the world where you know what, you know, what uh, intervention in the world will cause what result. Or you can do this by observation of other agents uh, acting in the world and and observing the effect, uh, other humans, for example. So I think. You know, at some level of description, uh, intelligence is just statistics. Uh, but that doesn't mean you don't, you don't, you know, you won't have models that have, you know, deep mechanistic explanation for what goes on. Uh, the question is, how do you learn them? That's that's the question I'm interested in, uh, because, you know, a lot of people who actually voice their criticism say that those mechanistic models has to have to come from someplace else. They have to come from human designers. They have to come from I don't know what. And obviously, we learn them. Uh, or if we don't learn them as an individual, nature learned them for us using evolution. So regardless of what you think, those processes have been learned somehow. So if you look at the, the human brain, just like when we humans introspect about how the brain works, it seems like when we think about what is intelligence, we think about the high level stuff, like the models we've constructed, concepts like cognitive science, like concepts of memory and reasoning module, almost like these high level modules. Is there, is this serve as a good analogy? Like, are we ignoring the, uh, <laughs> the dark matter, the, the basic low level mechanisms, just like we ignore the way the operating system works, we're just using the, uh, the, the high level software. We're ignoring that, at the low level, the neural network might be doing something like statistics. <laughs> like, I mean, uh, sorry to use this word probably incorrectly and crudely, but doing this kind of fill in the gap kind of learning and just kind of updating the model constantly mm -hmm. in order to be able to support the raw sensory informa information to predict it and then adjust to the prediction when it's wrong. But like high le when we look at our brain at the high level, it feels like we're doing, like we're playing chess, like we're, we're like playing with high level concepts and we're stitching them together and we're putting them into long-term memory. But really what's going underneath is something we're not able to introspect, which is this kind of uh, simple, large neural network that's just filling in the gaps. Right, well, okay, so there's a lot of questions and a lot sure. of answers there. <laughs> okay, so first of all, there's a whole school of thought in neuroscience, computational neuroscience in particular, um, that likes the idea of predictive coding, which is really related to the idea I was talking about in self-supervised learning. Mm -hmm. So everything is about prediction. The essence of intelligence is the ability to predict. Yeah. And everything the brain does is trying to predict uh, predict everything from everything else. Okay, and that, that's really sort of the underlying uh, principle, if you want, that uh, self-supervised learning is trying to kind of reproduce this idea of prediction as kind of an essential mechanism of uh, task-independent learning, if you want. Mm -hmm. The next step is, what kind of intelligence are you interested in reproducing? And of course, you know, we all think about, you know, trying to reproduce sort of, you know, high-level cognitive processes in humans. But like with machines, we're not even at the level of even reproducing the learning processes in a, in a cat brain. Um, you know, the most intelligent of our intelligence systems don't, don't have as much common sense as, as a house cat. So um, how is it that cats learn? And, you know, cats don't do a whole lot of uh, reasoning. They certainly have causal models. They certainly have, uh, because, you know, many cats can figure out, like, how they can act on the world to get what they want. Um, they certainly have a, a fantastic model of intuitive physics, uh, certainly of their, the, the, the dynamics of their own bodies, but, but also of praise and things like that, right? So um, they, they're, they're pretty smart. They, they only do this with about 800 million neurons. Uh, we are not anywhere close to reproducing this kind of uh, thing. So to some extent, I, I, could, I could say, let's not even worry about like the high-level cognition uh, and kind of you know, long-term planning and reasoning that humans can do until we figure out, like, you know, can we even reproduce what cats are doing? 